Hi, welcome to this particular module and this is a lecture series that we are looking at oscillators right. So, until now we have seen what exactly oscillator is then we have seen how you can use operational amplifier as an oscillator then we have seen uh, kinds of oscillator uh, and the criteria right what is criteria phase shift should be 0 and that is phase shift is the output voltage that is feedback through the feedback network to the input of the oscillator should have 0 degree phase shift. Second condition was the gain into feedback vector beta should be mode of gain into beta should be greater than equal to 1. Initially we keep it greater than 1 to start the oscillations and then we make it equal to 1 to sustain the oscillations right. Then we have seen the use of R and C right. So, using uh, resistors and capacitors in the feedback network what we can get we can get a uh, we can we can design a uh, phase shift oscillator right. So, we have seen how the phase shift oscillator can be designed. Then we have seen that there are some cases where your uh, amplifier that you use in the oscillator uh, will not give you any phase shift. In that particular case you have to use uh, uh, a feedback network without any phase shift correct because amplifier at the output is not giving any phase shift that means output of the sig output signal or uh, the signal at the output of the amplifier is in phase with respect to input. In that case the same phase will go to the uh, input of the oscillator through feedback network. So, feedback network should not have any kind of phase shift right that is what we have seen that was the case of vane bridge oscillator and this RC oscillators are oscillators that are used at lower frequency. For higher frequency we have to use oscillators that are using uh, L that is inductor and C as a capacitor right. So, these are the oscillator that are using L and C as reactances or reactive components reactive components. Then we have seen how the L and C oscillators that is tank oscillators uh, can be used for uh, generating the signal the oscillatory signal. So, for that uh, we have seen that how the initially we can take a condition where the capacitor is charged and then it discharges when an inductor is connected and then inductor is magnetically uh, charged and then it discharges back the capacitor charge in a opposite polarity right. This opposite polarity comes because of the Lenz law that we have seen in the case of uh, LC oscillators right. Then once we understood how the LNC can be used as a feedback network we have designed two types of oscillator the first one is uh, Hartley oscillator and the second one was Colpitz oscillator. Now, if you remember a trick to understand how many capacitors and how many inductors you have to use in which uh, oscillator you have been seen that in a Colpitz oscillator you can easily say that it is two capacitors one inductor right while in Hartley oscillator there were two inductors and one capacitor. Then we have seen few examples. Now, let us see the case of another kind of oscillator which is called crystal oscillator. So, before we go to the crystal oscillator there is a property called piezoelectric property. So, you guys have to understand what exactly piezoelectric property means right and at the same time you also need to understand what is a piezo resistive property means because there is lot of confusion uh, I have seen that when I ask a student what do you mean by piezo resistive the definition will be of piezoelectric and when we ask what is piezoelectric the definition will be of piezo resistive. So, do not get in confusion piezoelectric crystals uh, is the crystal that when we apply a pressure you will see the change in voltage will say change in voltage a crystals shows some of the crystal shows piezoelectric property applying pressure can show change in voltage. Another one is piezo resistive applying force or pressure will show change in resistance will show change in resistance resistive electric you see that is a what is electric voltage is electric what is resistance resistance is a resistance. So, there is change in the resistance in the piezo resistive material they are just to um, uh, have a basic definition of what is piezoelectric and what is piezo resistive uh, uh, sensors or piezo resistive and what is piezoelectric uh, definition of both the uh, terms ok. So, if I now talk about the crystal oscillators let us come uh, let us see the screen and what we see here is that uh, uh, an electronic oscillator circuit that uses mechanical resonance of a vibrating crystal of a piezoelectric material to create electrical signal with a precise frequency. That means that this is a crystal that is used right we, we draw a crystal like this right this is this entirely is a crystal actually. So, we this is a crystal and then we have taking the uh, output of the crystal 
right and this output will be nothing but electrical signal we can say voltage we can say voltage this voltage is generated this voltage is generated because of the mechanical resonance of this particular crystal how this will mechanically resonate when we apply a uh, pressure when we apply some pressure it will start resonating this resonance will cause the vibrating crystal of piezoelectric material this material is piezoelectric and there will be change in the electrical signal each crystal has its own frequency and implies greater stability in holding the constant frequency. So, every crystal has its own frequency and uh, uh, it can hold or it can have a stable frequency response prefer for greater frequency stability. So, when you have when you want to have a stable when you want to design a stable uh, oscillator the crystal oscillators are preferred are preferred over other kind of oscillators. Okay. Now, now what we see piezoelectric effect ok. Just now we have discussed let us see once again under the influence of mechanical pressure under the influence of mechanical pressure voltage gets generated across the opposite faces of the crystal. You see here it is shown this I have taken from the Wikipedia you can see here we are applying a pressure the crystal is deforming you see you see this one ok. See? is moving when it is when we apply a mechanical pressure there is a change in voltage you look at this meter right when applying pressure voltage increases releasing pressure voltage comes back. So, applying pressure will change will cause change in the change in the voltage or change in the signal ok applying pressure where across the faces of the crystal. On application of mechanical force to make crystal vibrate the AC voltage gets generated conversely if the crystal is subjected to AC voltage it vibrates causing mechanical distortion that is that in uh, 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 if I apply mechanical force if I apply a mechanical pressure you can see the change in voltage, but if I apply voltage if I apply a voltage then you can also see change in mechanical distortion. All right. So, vice versa is also a possibility all right cool. So, this is what your this is what your piezoelectric effect means. Now, when I talk about crystal oscillators what are the crystal types we have to understand right then only we can see which type we can use it. So, when we talk about crystal types what is one first is naturally occurring crystal types right naturally occurring and second one is synthetically occurring crystals one is naturally occurring second is synthetically occurring. So, Rochella salt has the greatest piezoelectric activity, but mechanically weakest. So, this is the greatest piezoelectric activity that means that uh, a small change in mechanical pressure can cause a, a huge change in output voltage, okay. but mechanically weakest. So, mechanically they are uh, very weak not not uh, uh, strong enough to withstand higher mechanical pressure that is why they are mostly used in microphones you see. So, now we can say that ok if I want to have if I want to generate a voltage when I apply pressure and uh, it should be sensitive then we can use a Rochella salt all right. Let us see another crystal called thermaline ok and this crystal is a least piezoelectric effect, but mechanically it is robust or strongest and it is also most expensive you see least piezoelectric effect, but mechanically strong. Let us see the third one quads we have seen right many times quads compromise between Rochella salt and tourmaline easily available and very commonly used in oscillators very commonly used in oscillators. All right. So, think about where this quads crystal oscillators are used, what are the applications, what are the applications of quads crystal oscillator ok and what does a watch do, watch is our watch hand watch which shows time right time. is there a crystal is there oscillator in a watch look at it applications of quartz crystal oscillator see what is there within a watch within a watch ok. Look at it ok cool. So, now these are naturally occurring let us see synthetically occurring let us see 
synthetically occurring. So, examples are lithium tantalite, lithium tantalite, gallium phosphate, langesite. Okay. So, these are all synthetically occurring crystals. Now, <coughs> let us see how we can design the crystal oscillator, okay. how we can design the crystal oscillator or how we can construct crystal oscillator. So, what we see here is a tuned circuit oscillator using piezoelectric crystals as its resonant tank. Okay. So, what is that you see here? Tuned circuit oscillator using a piezoelectric crystal as its resonant tank, natural hexagonal shape of quartz cut in rectangular shape. So, we are using a hexagonal shape of quartz crystal cut into rectangular slab to construct the crystal oscillator. Now, this crystal is placed or mounted between two metal plates, uh, which you can see here, right. When not operating, its equivalent capacity is equivalent to a capacitor due to its mechanical mounting, right? Because you have a conducting plate, you have a conducting plate. When it's not operating, it's like a two conducting plates separated by some material, by some dielectric material. Now, on vibration, internal frequency vibration, mass if the crystal in is uh, if mass if crystal indicating inertia and some stiffness represented by capacitance C. So, on vibration, we have these three components R, L, and C that you can see right over here we on vibration. Okay. This is at uh, this is just a capacitor when it is not operating, but when it is operating then there will be a resistance, resistance is because of the internal frictional vibration 1. Okay. Then because of the mass if the crystal indicating inertia, so that will be L and some stiffness represented by capacitor C, thus this R L C comes into picture. Now, uh, RLC forms a resonating circuit for finding resonating frequency FR we have to use FR equals to 1 by 2 pi under root of LC into under root of Q square divided by 1 plus Q square where quality factor is quality factor of the crystal is given by Q equals to omega L by R quality factor Q is given by omega L by R this is the quality factor of the of the crystal all right so what we understood that when the crystal when the crystal oscillator or a tuned circuit is not functional it acts as a capacitance when it is functional when it is vibrating it will have r l and c uh, in its equivalent circuit so q of the crystal is very high you see and up to 10 raise to power 6 or 10 to the power 6 is also achieved hence under root of q square by 1 plus q factor approaches unity and we get the resonant frequency f equals to 1 by 2 pi under root of lc correct because if this reaches unity then only we can have we can have q of 10 to the power 6 so our formula will become nothing but f r equal to 1 divided by 2 pi under root of lc then another factor that we have to understand or another fact we have to understand that F r is in fact inversely right resonant frequency of a crystal is inversely proportional to the thickness of the crystal. Okay. That is why we write F is proportional or inversely proportional to the thickness T. So, to have high frequencies what we understood that it is inversely proportional. So, for higher frequency thickness should be small correct thickness should be small but makes it mechanically weak right as you decrease the thickness of the crystal right from here to here to here right which is mechanically weak this one is mechanically weak which is mechanically strong this is mechanically strong but uh, what can be used at a higher frequency this can be used at higher frequency because thickness is low right but mechanically it is weaker mechanically it is weaker that is what is saying hence the limiting range of such oscillators would be 200 hertz to 300 kilohertz or 200 hertz or 300 kilohertz. Okay. So, this is how the crystal frequency crystal oscillator frequency is determined 
and it has to depend on thickness just to understand that we cannot make it too thin otherwise it will be mechanically weak. We have to limit our uh, range of oscillations to around 200 or 300 kilohertz very easy super easy right. Now, let us see another thing. So, once the resonant condition occurs when the resonance re reactance of series R L C leg R equal to X L equals to X C correct. So, when this condition occurs then the resonant will uh, start occurring uh, impedance in this condition is minimum which is resistance R therefore, the resistance uh, series resonant frequency is same as the resonant frequency which is given earlier right. So, what, what it says that when the once the resonance condition occurs right the X L will be equal to X C in that case the impedance R would be minimum obviously. So, therefore, the series resonant frequency is nothing but equal to the equal to the resonant frequency right resonant frequency is same as the resonant uh, the series resonant frequency is equal to the resonant frequency of the oscillator that is why the formula for uh, series resonant frequency is same is same like we have seen earlier. Okay. Now, what if a parallel resonance or anti resonance condition occurs. So, what does that mean that other reactance condition which occurs when reactance of series resonant lag equals the reactance of the mounting capacitor C m right there is a mounting capacitor if you see here there is a mounting capacitor C m right and <coughs> this is when resonant uh, starts then then X L will be equal to X C, but what if, but what if the uh, reactance condition occurs when the reactance of series resonant lag equals the reactance of the mounting capacitor. That means that this reactance the series the re reactance occurs occurring due to this series the components that are used in series it is equal to the mounting capacitor C the reactance and mounting capacitor is equal to reactance uh, formed or uh, obtained by this series uh, uh, resonant. series resonant lag. Okay. So, in that case under this condition the impedance offered by the crystal to the external circuit is maximum right. So, under parallel, parallel resonance circuit parallel resonance the equivalent capacitance we can give C m into C by C m plus C y because the impedance offered by the crystal to the external circuit would be maximum when your when your series resonant lag equals the reactance of the mounting capacitor C m. Hence, the parallel resonant frequency is given by F p equal to 1 and 2 pi under root of L c equivalent where c equivalent is nothing but your c m into c by c m plus c easy. So, let us see now since F s and F p are close right they are practically said to be equal higher q value is the main advantage of the crystal providing good frequency stability right. It has higher q that means, the frequency is extremely stable. So, if we neglect resistance R the impedance of the crystal is reactance J x which depends on frequency with formula shown here right. If we are neglecting resistance R what will be impedance you know it will be nothing but the reactance J O x which is nothing but minus J by omega C m into omega square minus omega s square divided by omega square minus omega p square where omega i is nothing but series resonant frequency and omega p will be nothing but parallel resonance frequency right. So, in series resonant frequency you can see output impedance here and you can see parallel resonance frequency. So, here when you see this is a crystal frequency when it is in series like F s and uh, also the series resonance will cause the impedance to decrease at what we have seen and then uh, uh, when it is in parallel resonance which is F p again it will reach to a peak and then finally, again this will be forming. So, this is how the this is how the uh, oscillations will occur. Okay. So, this is just a representation of how series uh, resonance and parallel resonance are uh, during series resonance how the signal would be how your output impedance would be uh, compared to when it is parallel resonance all right. Okay. So, if we talk about stability further 
the frequency of the crystal tends to change stability uh, change slightly with time due to temperature aging etc. So, now another point is that when we are using crystal it has a it has a lifetime. So, as the time increases or when the, the when the temperature is changed or when it is aging right as time then the frequency uh, of the crystals tend to change slightly ok. So, temperature stability ok temperature stability change in the frequency per degree change in the temperature that is hertz or megahertz per degree centigrade ok. For 1 degree centigrade change in temperature the frequency changes by 10 to 12 hertz all right in megahertz. For 1 degree we have to we will see that or we have to understand that the change is by 10 to 12 hertz. This is negligibly small why because we are talking about megahertz in megahertz if I have 10 to 12 hertz change it is very less because mega is megahertz is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right 1 megahertz. Now, what I am talking about frequency change is only in this value right. So, if I have this this will be very less about 0 0.01 percent or 0.1 percent right. So, very less very less ok. So, that is why if there is a 10 to 12 hertz in one in, in megahertz range that is I am just talking about 1 megahertz it can be several megahertz right. Then in that case the the uh, change in temperature the, the change in temperature is not going to change the frequency that significantly. That is why we can say that the change in the frequency on the change in temperature is negligibly small. So, for all practical purposes it is treated to be constant right. Since it is negligibly small for practical applications we assume that the uh, frequency is constant uh, even there is a slight change in temperature. But if this match this much change is also not acceptable then the crystal is kept in a box where temperature is maintained constant called constant temperature O1 or cam constant temperature box all right. So, in some of the cases even the smallest change in the temperature uh, will cause a little bit change in the frequency which is 10 to 12 hertz for 1 degree right. So, for 2 degree it will be 24 hertz if 3 degree there will be more. So, 36 hertz and so on and so forth, but if that much also change in frequency is not acceptable in some of the circuit where we require uh, uh, the crystal to give us exact frequency stable frequency and there should be no effect of temperature then we have to keep the crystal in a box called the called the constant temperature box or constant temperature O1 all right to get a more stable frequency why because now we are talking about uh, the removing the effect of temperature we do not have the temperature effect on the crystal because it is kept within a uh, constant temperature box right. So, that is about the temperature stability how about long term stability when I talk about long term stability then what we see basically due to aging of crystal material right the aging rates are 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 per year per year for crystal this is also extremely small right 2 to the power minus 8 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 per year this is super small right very small. So, basically due to aging the crystal material the aging rate is so small. So, that is why it is long term stability is also kind of excellent. Short term stability in a quartz crystal the frequency drift with time is typically less than 1 part in 10 to the power 6 1 part in 10 to the power 6 is 0 0.0001 percent per day this is also extremely small is also extremely small. Now, I asked you a question what a watch consists of right the previous slides and <laughs> ok. <laughs> I have given you answer also in this slide. So, you see ok you see here where is the answer answer is here can you see that or a crystal has a good frequency stability hence it is used in computers counters basic timing device in electronic wrist watches in electronic wrist watches ok. So, 
uh, now you know that frequency stability is very important when we talk about the oscillators and that particularly crystals then crystals are so stable that they are used in many applications including computers including counters uh, including uh, basic timing devices including your digital wrist watch all right so that is the application of the uh, crystal okay so now since we kind of understand that okay what are the equation for fs we know what is the equation for c equivalent we know what is the equation for fp we know so if we know everything let us try to solve a problem all right so let us try to solve a problem uh, a problem is a crystal has a inductor l equal to 2 henry c equals to 0 0.01 picofarad r equals to 2 kilo ohm it is mounting capacitance is 2 picofarad then calculate the series and parallel resonant frequencies so is equation and the solution is also very easy we are given cm now we have to see fs fs is series resonant frequency series resonant frequency fs is nothing but 1 by 2 pi under root of lc so 1 by under root of this one when you solve it what you will get 1.125 megahertz all right you will find the value one uh, so how, if you see l is what 2 henry right then c is 0 0.01 capacitor and we have to write 2 pi 1 by 2 pi under root of 2 under root of 2 into 0 0.001 into 10 to the power minus 12 that will give us the fs of 1.125 megahertz okay excellent now we know what is fp fp is 1 by 2 pi under root of lc equivalent that means we have to find c equivalent now for finding c equivalent we should know the formula we already know the formula c equivalent is nothing but cm into c divided by cm plus c if that is the case we will put the value of cm cm is 2 picofarad and c is 0 0.01 picofarad so 2 into 10 to power minus 12 into 0 0.01 10 to power minus 12 divided by 2 into 2 power minus 12 plus 0 0.01 to 10 to power minus 12 that will give us nothing but 9.95 into 10 to power minus 15 farads so now we know what is c equivalent substituting value of c equivalent in the equation of fp we get 2 pi under root of 2 uh, there is l is 2 henry into 0 0.01 this one right 10 to power minus 15 so or uh, when we solve this we will get we will get the answer close to 1.128 megahertz we will get answer close to 1.128 megahertz easy let us see another example so now this is the example of the unijunction unijunction transistor or ugt oscillators before move before we move to ugt oscillators let us uh, uh, understand quickly about crystal oscillators quickly uh, and then uh, we will take the ugt oscillators in the next module okay we will see the UGT oscillators in the next module. So, what we have seen until now is how the crystals can be used in oscillator and then what kind of crystals are available which shows the piezoelectric property is not it which shows the piezoelectric property and then we have seen that which crystal is more stable which crystal is more stable and then we have seen how we can use this crystal as an oscillator and what are the kind of uh, frequency formula that we can find whether it is fs whether it is fp and then we have tried to solve a solve a quick problem we also saw that these crystals are extremely stable and hence they are used in many applications which were discussed in this particular module so now you know what are phase shift oscillators you know what is weinberg oscillator you know what is colpis oscillator you know what is Hartley oscillator you also know what are the crystal oscillators right now in the next module let us see what are UJT oscillator unijunction oscillators ok. So, uh, we will we'll stop in the, this lecture in this particular uh, uh, on this particular uh, crystal oscillators and let us see in the next module what are the other kind of oscillators all right till then you just look at these slides look at what I have taught understand uh, thoroughly what does what how exactly the oscillator works if you have missed the earlier modules go back and see earlier modules and see how, what are the barcosian criteria and how the oscillators were designed okay so i'll see you in the next class till then you take care